Hey, South Point, what's up, fam? That, that sun in the sky is reminding us uh, that summer's coming. Uh, and it reminds me of, of last year, we moved into a new to us home. Uh, it was the middle of the summer, it was mid-June, and so everything was lush and green. Um, one of the previous owners had installed some landscaping. Uh, and so there were like mulch beds and flowers and bushes and trees, and even a sprinkler system. So don't ask me what kind of plants they are. I don't know, you're gonna find out why. Uh, but if you remember last summer, it was really hot, right? It, it stretched out longer than typical uh, and just kind of dried everything up. And add to that that I didn't use that fancy sprinkler system because I'm cheap. And so you can imagine, again, things got crispy and brown by the end of the summer. And so at this point, I'm just hoping it all grows back um, at least a little bit as summer comes back to us. Now, the miraculous thing is uh, the grass or at least the weeds that are in my yard that are green, they're starting to spring up again. New, new buds are popping out on the trees. Uh, but the green stuff is having to push through some of that old dead stuff. A couple weeks ago, I went back and I tried to cut out some of that dead stuff. But honestly, there's, there's still some plants out there. I'm not sure if they're dead or just taking a long nap. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Now, across the street from me, um, I have these wonderful neighbors and they're retired. And so they take care of their yard like it's their full time job. Uh, and, and they have kids that are about my age. And so they're kind and they're gracious. They understand that, that we're mostly just trying to survive this season, right? Parenting three kids, working full time jobs, all that stuff. Uh, but I noticed that their green stuff in their yard looks different than mine but not in the way that you might expect. Uh, you see, she's starting to, she's cut back um, a lot of trees and bushes to almost like single stumps or single branches. She's lopped off branches off of things that look perfectly good to me. And honestly, it's a little bit strange, but here's the reality. Uh, she knows something that I don't. She knows what she's doing. And, and in a few weeks, her yard is gonna be full of life and color and butterflies and squealing grandkids running through the yard barefoot. Now in John 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples. This is his closest group of friends and followers. And Jesus says this, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now in this season, uh, it feels like we're being cut off in, in a lot of different ways, right? It feels like lots of things are being cut away. As Americans, we don't like to be told what we can and can't do. We don't like our freedoms being taken from us. Right? Like I feel like it's my first amendment right to eat a cheeseburger in a restaurant where somebody like takes my order and brings it to me. Um, it feels like it's my right to gather for birthday parties. And for the love, it's my right to send my kids to school. But at the end of the day, we understand that these things have been cut off with a purpose. Jesus says he is the true vine. He's the connection to the tree, the author of life. God the Father. And God is like a gardener who, like my neighbor, lops off with precision and purpose anything that's dead, that isn't gonna bring more life, that isn't gonna, that's gonna get in the way of more life and more growth. So did God cause this virus or did he allow it? I'm not sure and we don't really have time to cover that in this brief moment. But I think what we would agree on is that this social distancing is distancing us from some toxic relationships, some dead situations and environments um, that are gonna keep us from growing into who God wants us to be. And so I would encourage you, even if you need to stop and pause this video, consider are there people, places, or things that are being cut off in this season that the Spirit of God is showing you that, that need to be cut off for good? Are there unhealthy dependencies and self-reliance that God is stripping away in this season? Um, as the stock market continues to sink and to rise in volatility, as the virus impacts people from every socioeconomic bracket, is God cutting away an idol in your life that will choke out the health and the life and the growth that he has for you? Is he cutting away political allegiances that cause you to view this crisis through the lens of politics instead of people? If you're a follower of Jesus, this isn't an if. It's not that the Father may cut off a branch that doesn't bear fruit. It's factual. He does cut off dead things from us. And we can choose to participate with him or to resist him. Jesus continues verse two, every branch that bears fruit, that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now this is the uncomfortable reality of discipleship that, that uh, again, like Jesus, my gardener neighbor friend, she prunes with great care every branch, even the healthy ones, so that they can grow even healthier. So that the relationships and experiences that matter deeply to you and to me 
They matter deeply to us. And so God's not cutting them off. He's not punishing you. He's not angry. It's simply a season of pruning um, so that we can move on to something even better and sweeter and more life-giving. So just take a moment as we finish and pray with your own words. Surrender to the good gardener, the heavenly gardener, and ask him to show you what needs to be cut off and what simply is being pruned and trimmed back to make room for what's next. The scriptures tell us that we're more valuable to God than anything else found in creation. He loves you. He cares for you. He's with you and for you. And he knows what he's doing. You can trust him, even when it hurts. Love you guys.